Hey, what's up guys? Hope everybody's doing well and having a great day. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the recent large earthquake activity and a pattern I've noticed regarding this large earthquake activity as it continues. For the last 72 hours now, we've seen a large six, multiple large sevens, and a large 8.1 magnitude earthquake. Also going to take a look at the buoys and what's going on with that buoy in the Gulf of Mexico that was in event mode yesterday day afternoon. Also in this video, I've got a brand new picture slideshow, new sky phenomena photos, and from all around the world. Marky the Mark, not sure of the location, but he noticed these unusual pollen rings in the sky, and that's what I've been told causes these things. They're like circles in the sky that are loaded with color. Almost look like rainbows in the sky. Dennis P. out of Tacoma, Washington. More fiery orange and red suns influenced by the thick white wildfire smoke in Tacoma, Washington. Also has some photos out of Spokane, Washington, sent in by Marco H. Very well, could have been the same sunset on the same day. I'm not exactly sure, but I know they're both from Washington. Mary Hall noticed this observation from 250 miles above the Earth, looking down at the planet from the International Space Station. These are wildfires in British Columbia. So this is looking at the wildfire smoke from above. Here's looking at the wildfire smoke on the ground. Photos sent in by Darren out of Abbotsford, British Columbia, looking up at the sun, being once again influenced by wildfire smoke. You can see the ash that landed on the hood of his truck. Very thick layer of ash falling from the sky. He took a UV reading that day from Abbotsford, British Columbia, and you can see it was less than 1 at 12.23 p.m. That is peak UV time, and it was less than 1, so that tells us that the wildfire smoke definitely influences the UV minimizes it greatly. Linda P. out of Colorado. Another spectacular sunset being influenced by the wildfire smoke. Here's one that's a deep colored pink as the sun is dipping down below the horizon. Photo here sent in by Maria C. out of Lincoln, Nebraska. She sent in this one and this one right here as the sun is also being influenced by wildfire smoke in the middle of the country in Lincoln, Nebraska. Toby out of Lincoln, Nebraska. Now these people don't know each other, but Toby happened to notice the same sky, I think, on the same day. Awesome photo here taken by Miguel Quesada out of Traverse City, Michigan. Photo was sent in by Craig S. taken by Miguel of a very ominous looking sky. Super photogenic clouds above Michigan. Megan S. out of Sacramento, California. Up close and personal with a very intense double-decker rainbow out of Sacramento. Carolina W. out of Quincy, Washington. Notice this cloud coming up above her she's driving down the highway look like a big mothership moving across the sky carry north carolina photo and little video clips sent in by charles hancock creations over at his youtube channel this guy here is being influenced more than likely by sahara sand photos here taken by choppy out of north central illinois this was the day of the tornado outbreak in northern illinois and this photo was taken at the time of the tornado outbreak photo here of the sun being influenced by wildfire smoke taken by joshua out of yukon oklahoma Carthage, Tennessee, Christy. This guy here is more than likely being influenced by Sahara Sand. LK Nakula out of Carthage, Missouri. Got lightning almost coming in contact with that building. Sydney, Australia. Photo sent in by MP of a fiery orange sky. Luis out of New Smyrna Beach, California. You can see those clouds at the top of that big tall cloud bank being influenced by high winds. Steve W. out of Maryland. Big jumbo halo in the sky above Maryland. Photo here sent in by Amy C. of what looks like the outline of a ship just parked up in the sky. See it right there? That's what compelled Amy to take the photograph. Here it is in an inverted format, slightly enhanced, trying to pull forward any features. Does look like something in the sky. Leon out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Very colorful clouds in the proximity of the sun. Little video clip here by Bobby A. out of Cape Coral, Florida of some lightning as fireworks were going up into the clouds. Daniel M. above Barcelona, Spain. You can see those rainbow rings again in the sky as he was looking out the window of an airplane he was flying in 
above Barcelona, Spain. Good job, guys. Keep the photos coming. Since we're here at the website, quick look at the Schumann Resonance. You can see a little bit of background noise, but all in all, pretty quiet. As the sun is pretty quiet, too, especially the, the Earth-facing side of the sun. There was a small C-class solar flare yesterday without a sunspot, which is kind of rare. Hopping over to the Yellowstone Supervolcano Caldera, looking at the seismographs that monitor the mighty supervolcano. The red that you see here, which implies earthquake activity, is related to the 7.2 magnitude earthquake that occurred just a few hours ago down in Haiti. And there are several aftershocks associated with that large earthquake, but that's the red you see here. The dark blue is magma intrusion. We're seeing a little bit of that each day now as we come over here and check in on the supervolcano Caldera. But the red we see today is associated with the large earthquake activity. Looking at the global seismographs, for the most part, they're all jet black from the very large earthquake activity activity that we've seen here recently. Checking in on the power outage situation across the United States over here at poweroutage.us. Still have 444,000 customers without electricity from the very high winds that were associated with thunderstorms that rolled through the area three days ago. More high winds in the same general area as thunderstorms rolled through the eastern United States yesterday. This is a map over here at hailreports.com. The banners you see on here are wind damage reports. And keep in mind, these are just the reports that were reported. This is by no means all of the activity that occurred. And you can see the reports that were sent in practically overwhelm the map. This is just from one day. Here's what the last three days look like. Combination of hail, some tornadoes. Got a tornado up here in northeastern Nevada, which is kind of rare. And the wind damage is just unprecedented. And again, I want to emphasize these are just the ones that were reported. There were probably 10 times as many. Coming back to the earthquake activity, I want to share something with you guys that I noticed regarding the recent large earthquake activity. There was an 8.1 magnitude earthquake added to the list of earthquakes that have been occurring down in the South Sandwich islands region this one here came in at 1135 a.m three minutes after the 7.5 that occurred at 11:32 a.m the 7.5 was 39 miles deep the 8.1 was 30 miles deep and again those were down here in the south sandwich islands region which is right here and there's an ongoing swarm there have been multiple aftershocks several in the five some even in the six range a lot of activity going on down there at the 55 56 degree south latitude looking at a map that i put together of the recent large earthquake activity in the last 72 hours got the 7.5 and the 8.1 down here in the south sandwich islands area which is around the 55 56 degree south latitude coming up here to Alaska, you can see a 6.9 on the map. That 6.9 occurred today around 4.57 a.m. That would be my time, 21 miles deep, and that is at the 55 degree north latitude. So looking at the map, the big quakes in the southern hemisphere and the large 6.9 in the northern hemisphere, the large earthquakes were at nearly the same latitude, just in different hemispheres. 6.9 in the northern hemisphere, 8.1, 7.5 in the southern hemisphere. And then don't forget about the 7.1 over here in the Philippines that occurred on the 11th that was almost right in the middle of the large earthquake activity activity in the northern and southern hemispheres. I found that very interesting. We've also got a 7.2 that occurred today in the Haiti area, and there have been many aftershocks following that very large earthquake that occurred in the Haiti area just a few hours ago. You can see it right there. This one here was on land, and all of the aftershocks have been on land. Right now, I haven't heard any reports of damage coming from the area. Yesterday, we noticed a buoy here in the Gulf of Mexico, and here's a screen grab I took from yesterday's active buoy, or at least it was active here on this map. It was flashing yellow, which means it's in event mode. It did detect something. I don't know if it detected something on the seafloor because nothing appeared to be occurring on the surface of the water. So more than likely something on the seafloor occurred sometime yesterday or the day before putting that buoy in event mode. Right now the buoy is quiet. It's back to normal. No activity coming from that buoy in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. You can see right there
there. There's the same buoy. Right now, it's quiet. It is not in event mode. However, we do have several in event mode. North and south of the 7.2 Haiti earthquake, you can see both those buoys right there in event mode. But as far as I know, there were no tsunamis associated with that earthquake. Up here off the coast of Alaska, the recent 6.9 earthquake put one, two, three buoys in event mode. And to the best of my knowledge, no tsunami following that earthquake either. But I found it very interesting that in the northern and southern hemispheres, we've had very large earthquakes at nearly the same latitude, not only in the northern hemisphere, but the southern hemisphere as well. And we had a large 7.1 in the Philippines, just above the equator, almost directly in the center of the other two large earthquakes. Thanks for watching. Have a super day and be safe out there.